Hello and today we will talk about a new Richard Mille watch and we'll also take this opportunity to draw some parallels between the world of cars and the world of watches and we shall do so as the Geneva Motor Show was the setting for this product launch, one of the main uh, car show around the planet actually just taking place just now. And there are indeed some very interesting parallels to be made. Big brands, small brands, niche versus uh, mainstream, are these events still pertinent, etc. But first, let's talk watches. Uh, Richard Mille and McLaren have been enjoying a partnership since a couple of years already, but initially it concerns the uh, Formula One activity of McLaren. The first watch that materialized this partnership was launched last year uh, during the SIHH with the RM50-03, the lightest split-second chronograph ever made, weighing a mere 40 grams, all included, strap case, everything, and this was partially achieved with the use of some very high-tech materials such as graphene. But now Richard Mille has extended the partnership to the road car series of McLaren and to mark this they've just introduced a new version of their RM11-03. I mean like the original version this is also an automatic flyby chronograph with 50 uh, 5 uh, hours of power reserve but has a little sporty feel to it with the extensive use for the case of carbon TPT with orange quartz uh, TPT inserts, McLaren's uh, identity color, also used for the strap and in terms of design there has been some little tweaks for instance with the uh, design of the push buttons and crown to, much as, uh, to match as much as possible some design features of the sports car. But let's quickly listen to Richard Mille and Mr. Mike Fluitt, CEO of McLaren Automotive, what they had to say about it. This I think has been one of the, the easiest partnerships, friendships that you could have. We share a passion for cars, for racing cars, we share a passion for watches and we always argue whether we prefer cars or watches and we, we can't decide. But there's, a lot of similarity, we have a lot of customers in common, we have customers of our brands who appreciate the same things, the advanced design, the technology, the engineering, the creativity, the innovation, the lightweight materials that go into what we make. So I think that in our hearts we're in a very, very similar place for the two brands. In common also with Mike, we hate gimmicks, so everything is based, is achieved to have the best possible efficiency in terms of style, in terms of mechanical devices, etc. So this watch is a limited edition, but I must say that we're talking quite uh, big numbers as they've announced that they will produce 500 watches and when I heard this number, I first thought that uh, there must have been some kind of typo somewhere. Well, to buy one of these watches, you also have to be a McLaren Ultimate Series customers. That's the successor of the mythical P1 uh, car. So that's also quite a high number of cars that McLaren are looking to produce when you're considering the ultimate super dimension of these cars. I mean, the watch will be priced at 180,000 Swiss francs plus tax, that's a bit more than 200,000 uh, US dollars. And the chic thing is that you will be able to match your car's edition number with the one of your watch. But I guess that uh, for such a price, uh, this is kind of no normal. And you know what? Well, it doesn't concern me. Okay, let's now come back on the event itself. It had been a few years that I didn't attend and I must say that uh, by walking around it made me think of a few things. I've already talked about uh, some parallels uh, between the automotive and uh, watchmaking industry. Uh, for instance, the fact that uh, some 50 years ago there used to be many car brands and with the development of big automotive groups, well, this has had some major structural impact on this industry. Big players could invest heavily in their production capabilities, pooling uh, much needed uh, synergies which in turn resulted in more reliable more safe more efficient cars and today as a car customer you simply wouldn't understand if your car left you uh, standing on the side of the road so basically we get more for our money and the brands that, that couldn't follow uh, more or less all disappeared and we have seen the same type of uh, group uh, consolidation within the watchmaking industry in the last 10-15 years. But do we get more for our money when it comes to watches? Well, this is of course very questionable and should be the subject for a dedicated video because I could talk about it for quite some time. But the main thing I wanted to say is that I was pretty impressed by the number of uh, these small car manufacturers seen at this, this Geneva Motor Show. There has always been a few of them uh, exhibiting with some uh, crazy cars on display, but I really felt that there were many, many more present during this edition. 
But I first uh, must mention that we're talking mainly on the supercar side of things, I mean the high luxury segment of the market, and I'm not talking about simply pimping or tuning your uh, base car, but niche car brands that are developing almost everything themselves and placing the bar super high, such as the incredible Swedish Koenigsegg car. Yes, I had to mention this uh, Swedish origin, you know I'm half Swedish, so a bit of very basic chauvinism there. But uh, there are other fine examples, of course, but I really think that it demonstrates that in today's world, people, and I know that I'm uh, talking about very affluent people, of course, well, they are definitely more and more interested in expressing a sense of originality by going with these kind of cars instead of going uh, too mainstream. And this is something that we also see uh, in watchmaking. I mean, the rise of all these independent brands offering a more unique and different option goes along that route. And Richemille is obviously a very good example of this and I'm not saying that all the independent brands are encountering the same success as Richard Mille and it's actually I mean pretty complicated in terms of business for many of them but again it just shows that if you want to express something uh, slightly different and find options where brands are pushing the limits of creativity technical feasibility innovation and of course even finishing then independent watchmaking is definitely a way to go I mean, mainstream watch brands are more the Mercedes and Audis, uh, good but a bit dull, and independent, the Koenigsegg's, the Pagani's. Another thing I wanted to mention concerns the event itself, because uh, what I've recently been talking about regarding uh, Baselworld is also applied to these kind of car events. They cost a fortune for car brands, and some of them are openly questioning if they should continue with this model. Opel, a pretty big player, simply didn't come this year. Okay, I didn't cry too much about this, if you see what I mean. But it's just another sign that the mission and reason of being of these shows is definitely being questioned currently. The environment has changed, rules of the games have changed, of course, rules of communication and interaction uh, with your customer have uh, evolved and changed. And for me, what best symbolizes this is that the disruptive players, such as Tesla, didn't even bother to come. I mean, last year at Basel World, Samsung came and shook a few things up and shocked also a few uh, people. Well, they're, they're not coming this year either. So what Basel World is facing concerns other sectors too. Again, I do believe that these events are needed, but I strongly feel that their form must, must evolve to justify their existence and pertinence. So this is it for this report. A bit of watches, a bit of something else. Looking forward to your comments and thoughts on the matter. See you real soon. Thanks for watching. Viva Watchmaker.